right now we head across the pond and we bring in Rob Staten, who is uh, the man behind the Seattle uh, the Seahawks draftblog.com as uh, big news today out of the Pacific Northwest as they have the white smoke coming out of the chimneys in Seattle. Mike McDonald is the man to go from 72 year old Pete Carroll to 36 year old Mike McDonald. Quite the uh, the changing of the guard, so to speak, uh, Rob, for Seattle at their head coaching position. As as this process went along and Seattle you know, I made jokes. I'm like, is Seattle interviewing anybody? You know, you you heard about, oh, Atlanta's interviewed Belichick 33 times, and then, oh, they're Harbaugh. And it was very quiet until really this past couple of days. So what did you make of the process? And ultimately, what do you make of Seattle's decision to go grab a very hot commodity in Ravens defensive coordinator Mike McDonald? Well, when the news came out that Pete Carroll had essentially been fired, the, the one thing I didn't want the Seahawks to do was just go and have a coronation, which was just to go and find somebody, get the process done really quickly, and just have one person in mind, unless they were going to go big game hunting and go after Jim Harbour or somebody like that. I wanted there to be a thorough process, and it seems like they've done that. They interviewed a number of people initially, then they had some second interviews last week. It seemed as if they wanted to wait to speak to Ben Johnson, which they did on Monday. And then Mike McDonald on Tuesday. Then Ben Johnson obviously pulled out of the race to to go to either Washington or Seattle on Monday. And from that point onwards, it did seem as if Mike McDonald was the main target. And then when we learned today that he was flying to Seattle, it was a foregone conclusion. It's interesting, you know, that John Schneider, whose background is in Green Bay, where they typically have offensive-minded head coaches, in his first hire as a GM, he's gone for a defensive guy. But everybody's saying that, that Mike McDonald is incredibly intriguing, that he's very highly rated, very well respected within the NFL, and it's a brave new era, and it's a bit of a youth movement for the Seahawks. The way the Ravens dismantled uh, the Shanahan offense, do you think that factored into it? Hell, they even dismantled the Seahawks offense. Obviously, you got to go through the 49ers in in, in that division. Do you think that played into this decision at all? Maybe a little bit. I don't think you can make decisions based necessarily on who you're going to play. And what we've got to remember about that game against the Niners, they had five turnovers, which is fantastic. They also gave up 400 yards. Christian McCaffrey ran for seven and a half yards. A carry had over 100 yards. They had 120 yards rushing game. So even though it, it's kind of been a little bit misconstrued that that was a hammering, that, that they shut down Shanahan. And let's not forget, they played the Rams in Baltimore and they had 400 yards and should have won that game in Baltimore. So he didn't have the most amazing success against McShanahan, as we've started calling it in Seattle. Uh, but I think when you look at the bigger picture, everything that he achieved, the fact that the Ravens had the number one defense per DVOA, there's, there's a whole bunch of stats and records that the Ravens set. And also, what we've got to remember here is this the brand of football, isn't it? It's the tough, physical, fast brand of football. He's been mentored by the two Harbaugh brothers. And I think that's important as well. It's not just, hey, let's try and bring the Ravens' defense to Seattle. It's almost let's try and lean into what has worked for the Harbaugh's in, in Michigan and Baltimore in recent years. And the Seahawks want to do that. They want to be a bullying football team. They want to beat you up. They haven't done that for 10 years. I think with this appointment, they're hoping to get back to that. We're talking to our good friend Rob Staten, SeahawksDraftBlog.com, and we'll certainly be picking Rob's uh, brain quite a bit as we get into that beautiful season that is draft season. Uh, but right now, the Seattle Seahawks on the mind as they have decided to go with Mike McDonald, defensive coordinator from Baltimore, as our new head coach. Uh, before I, I venture into what's next from the offensive side of things, because that's always the question for fans is, okay, great, we hired a defensive coach. What do we do at offense Are you surprised, Rob, that they did not go the route of Dan Quinn? Because when Pete Carroll was fired or reassigned, however you want to put it, it it was the common thought of, it's going to be Dan Quinn. He led the Legion of Boom. He's got head coaching experience. Are you surprised that ultimately the Seahawks did not bring back Dan Quinn to be their head coach? I'm not, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm surprised, but um, there were a few moments during this process where you kind of thought this is heading towards Dan Quinn, and he's very well respected in Seattle. They think the world of Dan Quinn, and I think most people in the NFL have got a really good opinion of, of Dan Quinn. But it would have been a hard sell. You know, the way that that Green Bay game finished in the playoffs, 
the fact that when you look at his record, his successes seem to have been connected, for example, to having Micah Parsons in Dallas, to having the Legion of Boom in Seattle, to having Kyle Shanahan in Atlanta. And when he lost Shanahan in Atlanta, I think he went something like 24 and 29 after that. So, you know, it, it would have been a hard sell, I think, to bring him in. Who was he going to bring in as his offensive coordinator? There was a bit of talk that he was going to bring Chip Kelly in as his offensive coordinator. I think that would have been a hard sell to Seahawks fans, you know, to say that he's going to come in and lead the offense, whether that had been true or not, who knows? I just think that the Seahawks wanted something a bit different. They didn't want anything necessarily connected to Pete Carroll. They wanted to go with new, with young, with something that was going to excite the fans. And I think this will do that. You know, the Seahawks fans are, are very much in favor of the Mike McDonald hire. I think it would have been an incredibly mixed reception if Dan Quinn had come in. And I think they just want to go in a different direction. Where do Seahawks fans stand with Geno Smith? Because he's a good player. It's hard to find decent quarterback play in the NFL, but it's hard to see him winning a Super Bowl. Do Seahawks fans want the quarterback of the future? What are your thoughts here on the quarterback position? That's a great question because he, I think it's five days after the Super Bowl, they've got to make a decision on whether they're going to move on or not because he's, he's guaranteed money after that. So that date's coming around the corner. I think if they'd have appointed someone like Mike Kafka, to be the head coach, it would have been an indication that they're probably just going to cut him, as painful as that might have been, and draft a quarterback. With the fact they've gone with a defensive-minded guy, what I think they're probably going to do is try and rework that contract to lower his cap hit, which is three times what it was in the 2023 season, and keep him. But he is a bridge quarterback. They are going to have to draft one. The impression that I get is John Schneider is itching to draft a quarterback. So whether that's this year or next year, I think it's very likely that the Seahawks are going to be in the quarterback market. They want a younger guy. They want to develop somebody. So Geno Smith is a good short-term option. But as you say, he's probably not going to win you a Super Bowl. John Schneider has been waiting a long time to draft a quarterback. And now he's got the keys to the franchise. He will be doing that sooner rather than later. Rob Staten joining us here. Mike McDonald, the new head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. Only one vacancy left. The Washington Commanders, who very well likely could be the landing spot for Dan Quinn if uh, the rumors are true here. What do you expect, uh, Rob, before we let you run, for Mike McDonald to do from the offensive coordinator position, which obviously we all know when you hire a defensive guy, that OC position is, is quite important. It's incredibly important. It's going to define probably how much success he has in Seattle. He's got to get this right. You know, there's a bit of talk that can he convince Mike Kafka, who almost got the head coaching job, to, to get out of New York and maybe take the job in Seattle? It's been a bit toxic with the Giants. Can they bring him over? That's an option. I think there's a lot of respect for him in the building and a lot of, certainly a lot of respect for Andy Reid with John Schneider. And Andy Reid's been talking Kafka up. If not him, where do they go? It seems like everybody wants out of college football at the moment. Is there somebody in college <laughs> that they can go and get? Because it's a nightmare with the NIL. They keep recruiting, having to recruit their own players. Do they go and get somebody from there? You know, Tanner Engstrand's doing the rounds. He's the passing game coordinator in Detroit. If you can't get Ben Johnson, can he get his right-hand man? Do they go to the Rams and the Niners, Clint Kubiak, Jake Peets, Nick Cayley, to try and get an offensive coordinator? Either way, they've got to get somebody who can run this offense, get the best out of people like DK Metcalf, and drive this thing forward. The offense was not good enough last year. Terrible in the red zone. Not good enough on third down. Too streaky. No running game. That is going to be a huge question. Go to vsun.com slash subscribe to become a VEASAN Pro subscriber today.